Okay, so this is a Willem version 5.0b. This is the EEPROM programmer that I use mostly for making NES reproductions. And I had a problem pop up with it yesterday. I have a whole stack of 2 megabit EEPROMs here that I cleaned, erased, and straightened the pins on. And I needed to program some Mega Man Ultras. And I had a whole uh, thing full of empty ones. These are freshly cleaned and straightened and erased and checked for checked to be blank, and they are. But I wanted to figure out why these weren't programming. And I'll uh, I'll put one in and show you what it's doing here. Okay, I'm set for two meg. And yeah, this is my Mega Man Ultra file. All the switches are set properly. And it's failing and it says at 0, 05 chip 1A buffer is 5B. And uh, I started looking around a lot, really couldn't find a lot of information. And but I did find kind of an EEPROM programmer's handbook, which I really haven't been through too much. But also, something hit me when I was looking at the data sheet for a uh, 2 meg EEPROM. It says, for programming, most, most of them require 12.75 volt plus or minus 0.25 volt. And that kind of hit me. And you can go in here and test hardware. And you can actually turn on programming voltage on pin 1. And uh, then I'm going to check it here. I'm going to reposition the camera here for you. Okay, so I'm going to put the meter. Let's see if I can raise this up. And DC volts. And the program is still in test mode here. Close the ZIF. And put my ground on the, I think is a 5 volt regulator on the tab, so I don't have ground there. And then if I put it on pin 1, I'm only at 11.9 volts. So, I'm over like almost 0.6 volts off from proper programming voltage. And I think that's the problem. So, I want to go through the board here and just see if I think, see anything obvious first. And the first thing I want to do is actually just check the electrolytic caps. I can see uh, four of them right here, five. I should be able to check those pretty easy real quick. Okay, so I've unpowered the programmer and just a visual inspection doesn't show me anything. They don't look domed on the top at all here. Okay, so the big one is a 470 16 volt. Like it's finally settled down to about 425, uh, but only about 0 0.08, 0 0.09 ESR, which the ESR is kind of one of the big things I'm looking at here. This big cap might only be for uh, DC input. I haven't really traced anything yet. Okay, the smaller one next to it looks to be. 47 47.8.11 not horrible get another 47 here This one might be in series with another cap here. 
but I'm only getting point one. And then we've got a twenty-two up here. Spot on, low SCR, low ESR. And then forty-seven down here. That must be the other one that's in line with it. So if I'm getting 85 for both of them, they're close. They're probably more like 42, 43, which is close enough. So that doesn't really yield the result that I'm looking for. So I have to dig in a little further here. Something else I wanted to test was this, uh, this switch that I put on there as a little modification. Um, I do some 2764s, which requires 21 volts sometimes, and they're usually just one of these uh, jumpers like you see here. They're kind of all over the board, but I was always switching that thing, so I thought, you know, I could just solder a damn switch on there. So I did, and I thought, you know what, maybe that has a uh, too much of a voltage drop across it or something here. But if I do a test here. Show the middle pin 0.588 and the pin that I'm using now 0.588. So I'm not getting any voltage drop across that switch, so also not the problem. Okay, so I've been trying to trace 12 volts back everywhere, taking ground the same place, and uh, I've got this diode on the bottom side of the dip switches. And I do have 12.6 volts there. And all of a sudden I've got 12.6 at pin 1. Let's see, is the. Yeah, the test pin is still. Ugh, that's aggravating because I didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, I took this jumper off. Surely it wasn't, you know, I mean, I've changed it before, so Earl and Cardo. I had this chip out to look for a trace underneath of it. I don't know. I put this jumper back on 5 volts, but I really don't think that was the reason I changed that because of this problem. Oh, look at that. Now I'm down to 11.9. So, that jumper changed. I'll be damn. See, I'm almost sure I changed that from 5 to 5.6 to try to figure out what the hell was going on with these chips. Well, let's try another chip, I guess. Exact same thing. Very aggravating. So apparently it wasn't programming voltage. Oh, you know what? Unclick the test. Try that again real quick. Just to be sure. No difference. Turn test voltage back on. 12.6. So I'm within range of proper programming voltage. I still don't seem to be programming chips. Very aggravating. Hmm. Recently I was thinking it was programming voltage issues because like the error the error is consistent usually let's see. Five 
5, 5B. The shift has a 1A. Anyway, I was getting errors right off the bat on some chips for 0 in the chip being FF. Got all the way to six, huh? But a lot of them were saying error at zero, chip equals FF, buffer equals OO, zero, zero. So I thought maybe it didn't have enough power. At, at three, chip is CO, buffer is OO. So, I don't know, I might go back and just erase these again. Actually, what I might do is uh, clear the buffer with all zeros. And then, well, I was going to say program every chip. There you go, there's the first error of exactly what I was talking about. At zero, chip equals FF, buffer equals zero, zero. And this is the exact same chip that I just tried to program with the bin. Okay, now I'm getting the same error, which I was getting a different error just a second ago. Very frustrating. But if you clear the buffer with all zeros, this, uh, this is the opposite of erasing them. This is filling them completely every bit will be a zero and when you race it every bit is a one so when you program them they're actually changing ones to zeros something I read about online and uh, had some 8 megabit chips which is something a lot of people use for Super Nintendo stuff and I wasn't going to use them so I sold them on eBay so what I did to make sure that they were in fact completely usable as I did exactly this I erased them I checked them and then I programmed them with all zeros and checked it and verified it and then I erased it again and verified it so that I knew that every single bit in the whole chip was functioning properly so I'm not sure what to, what to uh, try next other than I might erase all the chips again and then retest